Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we learned about the last two instruction types of the logical group of instructions. So clearly, we actually have learned about all the different instruction types of the logical group of instructions which are provided by the 8085 microprocessor. In this session, we are going to have a summary of the logical group of instructions. Basically, we will revise all the instruction types of the logical group. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topic that we are going to cover in this session, today we will learn about the summary of logical instructions. So let's begin. Now if you remember, when we started learning about the logical group of instructions, I told you there are 15 different instruction types. And in those 15 types, we actually have learned about 43 different opcodes. Today, let me prove that to you. I hope you remember that the first logical group of instruction that we have learned was ANAR. The instruction type ANAR stands for AND ACCUMULATORS CONTENT WITH R. And by R, we meant the accumulator register, that is, Execution of the instruction ANAA would perform AND between the content of the accumulator with the content of the accumulator itself. Apart from that, using the instruction ANAB, ANAC, eventually ANAL, we could perform the AND operation between the content of the accumulator and the contents of the different general purpose registers. And along with these instructions, the instruction ANAM lets us perform the AND operation between the content of the accumulator and the memory location which will be pointed by the HL register pair. So clearly, for this instruction type ANAR, we have got 8 different instructions. And do remember, when we are performing AND, the carry flag is to be reset and the auxiliary carry flag is going to be set. Coming to the remaining flags, these are to be affected based on the content of the accumulator. So for the instruction type ANAR, we have got 8 different opcodes. Coming to the second instruction type ANID8. Using this instruction, we can perform AND operation between the content of the accumulator and the second operand we were sending via the instruction itself, that is, the data of 8 bits. This instruction type only has got a single opcode. The next instruction type of the logical group of instructions which we learned was ORAR. Coming to the instruction type ORAR, it stands for OR the accumulator's content with R. Here also by R, we are mentioning about the accumulator, all the different general purpose registers, as well as the memory element which is going to be pointed by the HL register pair. The only difference between ANAR and ORAR is, in case of OR operation, the carry as well as the auxiliary carry both are to be reset. The remaining flags are to be affected based on the content of the accumulator after the operation has been performed, just like in case of AND. Therefore, for the instruction type ORAR, we have got 8 different opcodes for all the different 8 instructions. The next type of instruction that we learned was ORID8 or immediate the data of 8 bit with the content of the accumulator. This is similar to the instruction type ANID8. The only difference is in case of ORID8, we are performing the logical operation OR. For this instruction type, there is only a single opcode. The next instruction type was XRAR. This stands for exclusive or the accumulator's content with R. Since we are mentioning capital R, therefore we have got a different instructions of this type. Apart from that, since exclusive or also is a variation of OR, similar to OR function, here also the carry and the auxiliary carry flag are to be reset. So clearly, for XRAR, we have got 8 different opcodes. The next type of instruction that we learned was XRID8. We are supposed to perform 
XOR between the accumulators content and the data of 8 bits which we were sending in immediate addressing mode. For this instruction, we have got a single opcode. Coming to the next type, it is CMA. Complement the content of the accumulator. I hope you remember, we can directly complement the contents of the accumulator using this instruction. And since the accumulator is a special purpose register, therefore, we can only complement the contents of the accumulator, not the contents of any other general purpose registers. So for this instruction type, we have got only a single opcode. The next instruction that we learned was CMC. And for this, we also have a single opcode. Now notice, the instruction types 1 and 2, that is ANAR and ANID8, these two instruction types pertain to the logical AND operation, whereas the instruction types ORAR and ORID8, these two pertain to the logical OR operation. Instruction types XRAR and XRID8, these to help us implement the logical exclusive OR operation. Thereafter, the instruction types CMA, we can also include the CMC. These two instruction types help us implement the logical NOT operation. Now, after we learnt about the logical instruction CMC, if you remember, we also learnt about the instruction type STC. It stands for set the carry flag. For this instruction type, we have got only a single opcode. The tenth instruction type that we learned was CMPR. Now, in case of CMPR, we learned about the three different situations. At first, the content of the accumulator can be greater than the content which is stored inside the general purpose register or in the memory location which is pointed by the HL register pair. This situation is notified by resetting both the carry flag and the Z flags. We also learned about the second situation where the content of the accumulator is actually lesser. The situation is denoted by setting the carry flag and the Z flag is reset. I hope you remember the example. After we learned about the second situation, we also came across the third situation where both the content of the accumulator and the content which is inside R, which in this specific case was the general purpose register E, are the same. This is notified by the status of the carry flag which is reset and the status of the Z flag which is to be set. With this particular combination, the microprocessor can declare that both the contents of the accumulator and the other operand are same. Now if you notice, the instruction type is CMPR. So by stating capital R, we are mentioning about the accumulator, all the different six general purpose registers, that is B, C, D, E, H and L, also the memory element which will be pointed by the HL register pair. So for this instruction, we learned about the eight different opcodes. The next instruction type that we learned was CPID8. This is compare immediate the content of the accumulator with this immediate data of 8 bits. For this instruction, there is only a single opcode. Thereafter, the instruction RLC. Now RLC stands for rotate left accumulator's content and send a copy of the most significant bit to the carry flag. This instruction falls under the one byte long instructions category and using this we can always check the value of the most significant bit. That is, after it is sent to the carry flag, we can check whether it is the bit 1 or 0. Using the instruction RLC, we can also perform the multiplication by 2. And for the instruction type RLC, there is only a single opcode. Coming to the next instruction type, it was RAL. RAL stands for rotate accumulator's content left, but this time involve the carry flag. So the most significant bit of the accumulator after the execution of the instruction will be sent to the carry flag and the content within the carry flag will then become the least significant bit of the accumulator's content. This instruction type RAL 
can also be used for checking the value of the most significant bit and performing the multiplication by 2. Additionally, using this instruction, we can also introduce a new bit as the least significant bit. So, for the instruction RAL, there is a single opcode. The next instruction that we learned was RRC. We learned about this in the previous session itself. I hope you remember that RRC stands for Rotate Write the Accumulator's Content and in that process, we are supposed to send a copy of the least significant bit to the carry flag. Using this instruction, which is also of one byte long, we can check the status of the LSB and we can also perform division by two. So for the instruction type RRC, there is only a single opcode just like RLC. Now coming to the 15th instruction type, it was RAR. It stands for rotate accumulators content to the right, but this time involve the carry flag. So the execution of the instruction RAR is going to send the least significant bit of the accumulator to the carry flag and the contents of the carry flag is going to become the most significant bit within the accumulator register. Using this instruction along with checking the value of the least significant bit and performing the division by 2, we can also introduce a new bit as the most significant bit. For the instruction type RAR, we also have learned about a single opcode. Now notice, as I told you, there were 15 different instruction types of the logical group of instructions. Let's now check whether we have covered all the 43 different opcodes. So ANAR has got 8 opcodes and ANID8 has got 1 opcode. So for the AND operation, we have got 9 opcodes. Then for ORAR, we have got 8 opcodes and for ORID8, we have one opcode. So, nine more opcodes, therefore, nine plus nine, 18 opcodes. Then again, for the exclusive OR operation, which is supported by the XRAR and XRID8, for these two, we have got nine opcodes more. So, clearly, 18 plus nine, that is 27 opcodes. Now, for CMA, we have got one opcode. So 27 plus 1, 28. For CMC, one more opcode. So 28 plus 1, 29. Then for STC, we have got one opcode. So 29 plus 1, 30. Then if you notice, for the compare operation, we have got nine more opcodes. So 39. Then for RLC, we have got one opcode. So 40. And then RAL, Another opcode, so 41. Then RRC, one more opcode, 42. And finally, RAR, the last opcode, 43. So, with 15 different instruction types in the logical group of instructions, we learned about 43 different opcodes. So, in this session, we cover the topic summary of logical instructions. Alright people, that will be all for this session. From the next session onwards, we are going to solve some problems on the logical group of instructions. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.